And we're recording. So, hello, uh, this is Martin, and I'm with Brother Littlefoot. And I'm going to start with a quick video to introduce him, and it's going to lead right into some questions, and we'll go from there. So, here we go. I met Brother Littlefoot not long ago in the comments under one of my videos. YouTube has become a sanctuary of sorts, a place for meeting like-minded people who are also into this fascinating subject. He introduced himself and I could tell that we share a similar interest in the Sasquatch people. And I love learning about this and hearing from others with experiences. Brother Littlefoot has written a book titled, He's Not Harry, He's Our Brother. I found this title interesting and this isn't the first time that I have heard of the Sasquatch referred to as our siblings. On his YouTube channel, he has a number of videos with some recordings, some experiences shared, and he also reads a couple chapters from his book with Sasquatch around him. I too have had experiences when I was where they were around me, and I love this idea of reading with them around. I did also hear some interesting sounds in those videos. That being said, I do not know much else about Brother Littlefoot and his experiences, and I look forward to asking some questions and learning about them. Next, I have a couple questions to ask, and then we will just go wherever this conversation takes us. So that's it. And um, can I thank you for that great introduction? <laughs> absolutely i appreciate any promotion i can get man so thank you that was very kind of you sure do you have anything you'd like to add before i start uh the questions um i'm just happy to be here i, I really am it's an honor to be here after mike patterson who i think is awesome mm. um and i want to give shout outs to the arizona four who i think are a great bunch of guys i don't know them all and i haven't heard them all but i know that they uh say good things about the sabe people and really, anybody, and, and uh, Brian King Sharp at Sasquatch Odyssey, and mm. these are good names to connect you with. And uh, yeah, I'm listening. Uh, and and uh, anyone out there that is talking good about the Sabe people, I, I'm right there with you. I support you. I will. I would share your channel on my channel. Anything, you know, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, Love so that. Want to want to have a communal thing going on, but I'll, I'm I'm only in agreement with those who see the Sabe people as ultimately good people who are also human and maybe, you know, it's possible that there could be some that we have issues with, but it doesn't mean that those issues can't be worked out, you know. That's, wow. That's, 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 that's the uh, point of view that I come from and, and that's the point of view that I want to share with people and uh, see where it goes, you know. Yeah, I like that and I want to make sure, can you hear me okay right now? Yes. I can hear you good. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right, well, I will, what I'll do is I'll play this and I'll just read the question and then let you answer and feel free to skip any that you don't want to answer. Sure. Can you talk about that experience when you started hearing lots of noise coming from the tree line, that the first? The first encounter, the first known encounter. Okay. Yes. Because there have been other encounters and I didn't know what I was experiencing, but now that I look back, there's no other way to explain what I was experiencing. Hmm. Um, but uh, yes, the, the first time, the, my first known encounter, I had gone out that night. Um, I actually remember stopping um, at, the, at the, what it is, it's a place, it's a road where there are pull-offs and you can look off on the mountains. There are several places like this throughout the mountains. And, uh, and these, I live in the uh, Southern Appalachian Mountains. Anyways, uh, in one of these places, there had been a dog there the night before and uh or some kind of animal i couldn't get close enough to see what it was but i was trying to rescue it i'd gotten another i'd said something on a facebook group and gotten another lady to meet me out there and we actually went looking and we were there together her and, and her two daughters i think and we were looking for the, the animal that i saw and we couldn't find it so we couldn't rescue it you know whatever it was it wouldn't come it would come close to me but only so close and it's funny because i never still don't to this day don't know what kind of animal that was but i remember that it came and sat down in front of me and folded its paws and wow. I was like, wow, that's strange, you know, so it had to be a domesticated animal, what I was thinking. So I left talking to them, and this was uh, Sunday, August 2nd, 2020. It was almost the full moon. I think the full moon was the next day. I drove out to the next parking area, which is where I'll watch for UFO activity. In the parking area before that, where I'd seen the animal, that was another place that you can kind of watch for UFO activity, but it's not as noticeable from that, that view. 
Um, so, and that's why I've been at the other place. But so, getting back to the 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 uh, main place where we go to watch for UFO activity, that's where a lot of people are going to watch for UFO activity. Not just me. Um, we call them spirit lights, uh, star people, what have you. Hmm. There, there are things you can't explain, and, and you know anybody can say, well, it's it's just this or it's just that. And, yeah. Okay, Bubba. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, it, it just it gets to that point where it's like you're not there. You you don't know what we're talking about. I have, you know, I, I, I'm one of these people when I start seeing things in the sky, then I want to look, you know, on the Internet and find out exactly what I'm seeing. Is, is this a satellite? You know, so I want to know what a satellite is. So when I see a satellite, I know what a satellite is. Like, so that's a satellite. Mm. You know, even with the SpaceX satellites, we thought we were being attacked by space invaders. Um, you know, the actual Atari game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, uh, you know, you had to, I, I, I knew when I first saw them, I was like, that's weird, but I think that's us. You know, and then, you know, we go home. Oh, SpaceX satellite launch. Okay, this makes sense, you know. Yeah. So it's that simple. It's it's keep it simple, stupid, kiss. Uh, but that night, uh, while I was there, people had told me that there were Sasquatches there. Mm. And so I drove out there with, the, with a little bit more intention that night. And I said, okay, I'm going to watch UFOs, but I'm going to try to see if I can talk to a, a Sasquatch. I have a, I have a club that I kept in my car from a previous hike you know branch i'd picked up that was real solid and uh, i took it out and uh, i banged it against a piece of wood two knots and um nothing happened it was quiet and for about 20 minutes it was quiet and i forgot completely about it i mean is completely forgot about it as you can completely forget about it <laughs> and i'm watching for the ufos all of a sudden, on the embankment, after about 20 minutes, something goes starts going crazy behind me. And this is, you, have, you know, it's a big parking area. There's forest uh, down below, but it's it's pretty much clear cut right in front. You know, so people can see the view. But there's forest trees down below. There's forest on the side and trees, you know, that are up high that are up next to the parking area. Mm -hmm. And then there's a road on the back side, and then there's an embankment that goes straight up the mountain. You know, up to the the, the ridge. Sorry, the top of the mountain, uh, the top of the area. Anyway. Um, it's not the highest peak around there at all. And that's that's what you're dealing with. It's a bunch of trees and forest and you know, it's rocky, it's it's very difficult to climb. So anyways, uh I start hearing thrashing about. I mean just trees snapping, branches breaking. The way when I tell other Sasquatches about what happened, the way I tell them is I say, I heard thrash, crash, bang, <laughs> boom, smack, bang. You know, just I just throw out whatever word I can just to show ex, you know, expressiveness and they know what I'm talking about. They get it. They're like, okay, we get you now. You know, wow. he he was he was showing off. He was telling you whose territory it was. Mm. But uh, anyway, um, I didn't know that at the time. At the time, I still, like I said, it, it completely out of my mind for whatever reason. This shit went on. I'm sorry, I didn't know if you. Could ah, that's all right. <laughs> um, this stuff went on for uh, it was about thirty to forty-five minutes. Wow. I was watching my watch and it began at around 1045 and I mean, I'm sorry, at about 10 o'clock and it all ended about 1055. Wow. I think is what it was. Wait, was it was 45. Yeah, I think that's about right. It, that whole time I'm like yelling back at this animal. I'm like, go away. Usually I can yell at an animal and go away. And I'm yelling back and forth at this animal over and over and over. And, uh, and it just keeps getting louder. It's escalating. This is not like anything I've ever encountered out there. And I've been coming out there for two or three years. This was my third year out there. Mm. Third summer. Several nights, you know, every night. Because I was I was at a point in my life um, where I was, you know, what you call aloof, I guess. Um, I'd been through a hard breakup. Didn't really know what to do with my life. That kind of thing, and I'm, you know, 42 years old at the time. Like, well, who am I? What am I doing and on this earth? You know, meaning. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the, this continues on. I'm, sh and then it goes to a point where I turn my car around and I'm facing towards that ridge, and I've got my 5,000 lumen flashlight in my left hand, my car keys in my right hand, and I'm standing inside my car door because I am ready to drive out of there. But something mm. is telling me to stay, but my heart's pounding. Like, you know, mm. like I really feel like my life's in danger. And I do not feel that often. I'm the kind of guy that if I'm, I'm, one, I'm kind of stupid, like if a human pulled a gun on me, I'm really not that scared of a gun. <laughs> you know, and I, that's kind of a stupid thing, really. And But it's just it's just the way I am, you know. Mm -hmm. But I was terrified. And I felt something say to me, I can kill you if I want to, but I don't want to. Wow. 
and it wasn't it wasn't throwing anything at me at the car and here i am shining all the lights and yelling at it and you know completely turned around i mean i'm, I'm completely standing my i'm already stuck standing my ground at this point you know and uh to drive wow. out the parking area i would actually have to drive around a grassy uh kind of like a berm it's not really a berm but it's like a you know a grassy curb area so mm -hmm. i'd have to drive around that so it's not as simple as just getting out of there and getting on the road you know you have to drive and get away before something could just pounce on the car or throw something throw a tree down or whatever um it's that's a lot harder than it sounds mm. um, <clears throat> as far as is, is a human escaping but uh it, it continued and then about after about 35 minutes i think i finally figured out this was something different and I still wasn't registering, quite registering Sasquatch for some reason, just because I've never had an encounter. And I mean, yeah, you're going to be that stupid. You know, it's possible you could be that stupid in your first encounter. You just don't know. <laughs> not, not you, but anybody. anybody yeah. You know, um, what happened was it ended up, um, it kept escalating. And I finally, I said, okay, I need to sing. Something in me said sing. I sang three songs. I sang uh, Sam Cooke, A Change Is Gonna Come. Or I just sang bits of them, you know, a few verses or whatever. Mm. Uh, I sang uh, the Wende Yah, the Yahoo, the Cherokee morning song. I sang, uh, uh, if I sang Amazing Grace, maybe, or something like that. The whole wow. time I'm singing, the whole time I'm singing, this creature is quiet. Like, there's wow. completely quiet. Completely quiet. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of awestruck, and then as soon as I stop singing, he starts completely crash, bash, you know, just mm. tearing, tearing things apart again, or at least that's what I was hearing. And then I finally yelled up at the mountain. And that's when I realized this is a this is a Sasquatch. Or it, it was the moment before I realized it, but I was right on the peak of it, you know, right right there. Okay. And I said, "Hey, hey, I'm not your enemy. If anything, I'm your friend. I don't have any weapons. I don't mean any harm. Please hmm. don't run me off from my favorite place." And then it was quiet for about two minutes, and then it was came up on the. The ridge above. I mean, but loud and clear. No, no. Mm. And I felt it saying to me, literally, as if it was saying in its own way, okay. <laughs> you know? Wow. And like, it let me stay. And so I actually stayed, but I turned my car around. I watched for the UFOs and I did not bother him that rest of that night. And he did not bother me. And so it was a mutual understanding. We came to a mutual understanding, made peace, made an agreement. How many people tell you that they were almost run out of the Sasquatch territory, but but uh, not quite? Uh, you no. Know, nah. Usually it's fully, <laughs> it's full on. Mm -hmm. But it, in that moment, I was able to get my brain together. You know, it, it takes a while. It shouldn't have taken that long after, especially after I did the knock. <laughs> Just wow. like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I say humans are ignorant, that includes me. <laughs> um. That night, I, I stayed and watched the UFOs, and I did not try to talk to the Sabe person again at that point. And then I waited uh, till the next night. I left peacefully, and I decided I'm coming back out there the next, you know, going back out there the next night. And I, I went out and said, I'm going to go talk to him. Wow. And I was there, and I literally told him, I said, you made a friend, whether you like it or not. <laughs> and uh, and they began talking back to him, just in knocks snaps things thrown a lot of times but not not in not in violent harmful ways something sometimes it was seem violent or aggressive but it never is mm. it's not hurting mm. you if they want to hurt you they can hurt you mm. period if they want to rip you in half they can rip you in half period mm. but don't think of them that way because do, do you want people do you want people that you like and or love or that you want to be close to thinking of you that way good point you know and mm. it's so be, and, and you have to be careful. You don't know what you're dealing with, too. So at the same time, but in this case, you know, in this case, I was safe. Wow. Um, mm. So I went out there and I started talking to them again and they started talking back to me and I made friends with one of them. And I made friends with the whole family. Wow. Uh, and, you know, I've had several beautiful experiences and I still go visit with them uh, at least once a week to this day. Uh, I have a friend who goes with me. Um, or she meets me out there and she had experiences out there before I ever did. And this was wow. known as a UFO hotspot. And it was just a place where I learned, oh, well, some people started saying, well, there's Sasquatch here too. You know, okay. So, and then all of a sudden it turns into this beautiful, long lasting friendship with these Sabe people. Wow. And on top of that, it starts spreading. The first four families 
that I got to know all let me know they were there before I ever knew they were there. Mm -hmm. You know, now I did have people tell me where the first family was, you know, that they were, that they were there, but that doesn't mean I knew they were there until they showed me. Mm -hmm. you know? But, um, and I want to be clear that I have seen Sasquatch seven times. Um, so I don't want people to think I'm just hearing sounds in the forest and making assumptions. Um, I'm a dropout primatology and conservation student based only on the fact that my instructor uh, is one of those people who doesn't recognize the value of this work. And it doesn't, mm. it's not a personal thing. Like, I don't care if it's whether or not I'm doing it or somebody else is doing it. But if you're going to be a primatologist and you're not going to recognize the value of working with a whole other species of being, whether they, whether they fit into the realms of known physics or not, mm. then I have bad words for you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it becomes racism at some point. It starts out as prejudice or it starts out as denial or dismissal because somebody's worried about their prestige or because some corporation's got too much money invested in the land they're on or whatever, you know, or, mm. or, or another corporation's got money invested in a lobbyist to keep a uh, protected species from getting protected, <laughs> you know, needed, needed protected species to get protected, uh, to keep them from being protected. Mm. Um, we've seen that kind of battle happen many a times. But what I did learn in primatology and conservation, I took, uh, all I did was finish, I think, half the first course. I did really well. The instructor was always happy with my work, especially the papers I wrote and so on. But um, and, and I chose to write on things that were not easy to write about, like bonobos or the, the Bengal slow loris or, you know, something like the slow loris. I'm sorry, Bengal loris. No, no. And she was happy with that. But, but she would tell me when I sent her recordings of what I was recording, she, you know, the sounds I was getting, she would say, well, I hear sounds that I think are other animals in the forest all the time. I'm like, are you kidding me? And <laughs> it's so disrespectful. It's so um, demeaning. You know, and, and it, it's you could say, well, you're taking it personally. I'm saying, no, it's a matter of this work that these I, I this was part of a time where I needed. I believe these people needed to be protected. And I still kind of feel that way. But wow. I feel like it needs to be done more locally, like, in other words, on a county or state level instead of a federal level, if that makes sense, because mm. the last thing we want is the federal government involved in anything, especially protecting anything. <laughs> so, right. Um, I, I, I think it's better to have, to have it done on state and local levels in Washington State and two different counties I know of. Um, I don't know the mm -hmm. names of the counties, but I did check it out. That, I've heard uh, of that. Uh, Sasquatch is protected. And uh, also in the uh, Army Corps of Engineers, Washington State Atlas uh, in 1970 something. I, don't I think it's 75 because that's what year I was born. <laughs> it might be. I was thinking it was 72, but you might be right. So either way, um, the Sasquatch is listed as an actual species. Yeah. Um. In it, but they don't know one. They don't know much about one. We don't mm -hmm. know much about. So mm -hmm. those are things to keep in mind. And and I would like to get. It'd be great to get Sasquatch protected in my own county or state. You know, just because, if nothing else, let alone the fact that uh, uh, there are laws that allow for hunting Sasquatch in Oklahoma and Texas. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma says you got to bring it in unharmed, but that's. I mean, the whole idea is insane, anyways. I mean, what you're going to end up bringing in a, a big hairy homeless person. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's not, you're not bringing in Sasquatch. Mm. So it's, it puts humans in danger and it, it, to some degree. And, um, and also it might put their people in danger. I don't know mm. to what extent their abilities go to be able to protect themselves. Right. You know, so, um, I do believe they can disappear. Um, I was telling you before, uh, the interview that I have seen one in a vis in invisible form. Uh, mm -hmm. A friend, a friend witnessed it with me. It was before we ever had a Sasquatch encounter, either one of us, and he didn't wow. have one. I'd have one. And it was at that first family where I had that first encounter, but it was way before that. We were there for the UFOs. Wow! And <clears throat> it started raining. We got in the car, and I noticed he's just looking out the passenger window, staring at something like there's a hot chick out there or something, something <laughs> that I can't see, and there's nobody else around us. We're out on a mountain by ourselves. I look around him and I see I, I see what looks like uh, the invisible man on steroids or the predator. I hate using that term just because so many people have, but I, I want to say the invisible man on steroids. Wow. I'm, five ten, I'm five ten. This is about six two, probably 280, 300 pounds, but all muscle mm. uh, rain just pouring off of whatever is there. 
but you could see wow. the body and it even cocked its head and looked at us it cocked its head to the side and looked at us like you can see me wow and, and that's just how it felt you know mm -hmm. i don't know what it was thinking. and uh and i don't know what i was seeing other than i feel like i was seeing a sasquatch person now that i know that they're there mm. i'd never had another sasquatch encounter up to that point that i was aware of wow and one definitely had not so you had no idea what that was well i think it was a sasquatch now but at but the time, at the time, you, time you were... no, i did had no measurement we literally were thinking like is that an alien a ghost ghost mm. is what we would lean towards more yeah but how would a ghost cause rain you know to fall off of a solid form um, right you can't see that it kind of doesn't make sense itself mm -hmm. maybe people have seen spirits like that i don't know but uh yeah anyway uh and i Brian's staring at it. I'm staring at it. And then it, it, it's this goes on for, I guess, maybe a, a minute or two. Wow. And um, Brian had been staring at it longer than me. And, and then um, it stopped raining. And I'm like, are you looking at what or it started? It almost it started. The rain was starting to calm down. I'm sorry. And I said, Brian, are you looking at what I'm looking at? And he just he didn't didn't break his stare. And he goes, yeah, like that. And I'm like, OK. He's just because that's Brian. He's I'm a matter of fact. He's a matter of fact kind of guy. You know, that's that's it. If you ask him a question, he'll tell you yeah, I'll tell you no. And then we didn't really talk <coughs> much about it um, until after that night because we were having other encounters with uh, UFO like wow <laughs> objects out there. But um, mm. but now he will tell you to this day. He will tell you yes, we absolutely saw a large what appeared to be a large muscular invisible man standing in the rain. You know, he'll, he'll wow. say absolutely. And Brian has gone on to visit 25 more Sasquatch families with me. Wow. Um, some of them are troops. Some of them are two males or more. Um, but, uh, but I think a lot more of them are families than I realize, and they just keep their children back. Um, I know I've visited with 140 Sabe, whether it's families, troops, or groups, uh, you know, in 140 different places over wow. 40 different places and brian's done 25 with me and now they are living they started living behind my home uh december 2020 and uh, actually on on the 20th was the first or the 20 the solstice right around the solstice was the winter solstice was the first time that i sat at night at home and recorded them because i kept hearing them when i would come home from being out in the field and i would tell myself i was crazy mm. and uh and then i would have to go back and sit down with a recorder like I would out in the field and just pretend I was out in the field on my own front porch. And the next thing I know I'm here, I mean, it was so strong here. They were walking around on the, on the embankment across the road so loud all night long, five feet of walking that, and you couldn't see anything happening, even though there were no leaves on the trees or anything. You couldn't see what was going on over there. I wasn't trying to shine lights. I knew it was them. I had mm -hmm. another paranormal investigator come over here and he's six foot six, 330 pounds. And he came over here and the whole time he was here, it felt like they did not like him or something like the energy just switched. Mm. You know? And uh, like they had gone from trying to get my attention to uh, why the F are you bringing this guy over here? Interesting. And he was actually a nice guy. He's actually a peaceful guy. And he just had a boom mic. He didn't have a camera or anything. Mm. <laughs> he did have a gun. He's a he's a security guard. He did have ah. a gun in his car and that might have thrown him off. I mm. believe they can smell gunpowder. Okay. People say, how they know when, you know, they, they know when you have a gun. I'm like, oh, I believe they can smell gunpowder. Mm. Um, I'll just say this. If, if I've heard stories that they can tell when a woman's on her period. So if they can tell that, they can probably smell gunpowder. You know? Okay. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, we stood out in the front and, and uh, before he, and we both felt not scared, but kind of nervous, unnerved, I guess is the word. You know, not necessarily threatened, but on that line. Uh, uh, they, we could feel them all around us, but we were hearing them mostly across the road. Mm. And uh, before he left, he had had two other Sasquatch encounters, and they were interesting ones. He said he got a lady to uh, get a family of Sabe people to, to look for him before he left one night at her house. And another place he was at, he heard a large, massive crash in a tree above him, and then a couple other crashes, and then it was gone. He said, that's the only thing I could think of. It was, had to be Sasquatch. Sabe is like there's no mm. animal. No animal that I could think of, you know, there was mm -hmm. no bears around, nothing hit the ground. But anyway, uh, he came here and, and he said, he said, I have never heard. And he, he said, he compared this to, you know, even videos and other things he's heard. He said, I've never heard so much Sasquatch activity in my life anywhere. 
Wow. And uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> one I'll write down in my mind and remember forever, you know, that I had a paranormal investigator come over here and say that. Mm. Uh, but he was right at the time. It's like they were really trying hard to get my attention. But uh, ever since then, they've calmed down a lot more. And they never were violent or anything like that. They were just uh, loud. Mm. Um, like they were trying to let me know they were here. They were really trying hard to say, we're here. We need to make sure you're going to be okay with us being here. You know, wow. uh, looking back, I feel like it was almost as they were saying, uh, you know, we need to make sure you're not going to try to shine lights on us. You're not going to try to, you know, you're not going to pull out a gun. You're not going to, uh, which I think they knew that. Um, mm. But uh, you're not going to use a camera, you know, that kind of thing. And those things took a little extra time for me because I tried. Yeah. Um, the light, not so much, but definitely I did try with the trail camera that my brother had sent me. And uh, I'll tell you what I got. I got a, a three pictures, one picture of uh, three apples on the ground uh, and another picture of three apples on the ground and then a picture of no apples on the ground. Um, okay. Nothing in the pictures, mm. you know, and that was it. And Interesting. Uh, there was a couple other pictures that were very questionable that look, one of them literally looked like it was a full bodied sop, sop, uh, Sasquatch really looking around a tree. But then there were white blotches on the tree that I noticed in the daytime that I couldn't tell if that's what it was just, you know, picking that mm -hmm. up. And there also somebody else, I shared it in a Bigfoot group and somebody else said, there's a werewolf on the other side of that picture. Hmm. They, they meant like a dog man or whatever. And, um, yeah. Sure enough, when I looked into the picture, I actually deleted the picture because I kind of gave up on it. Um, it's just something I didn't keep for whatever reason. I, I just got rid of it. But uh, anyway, it did look as if there was something there. But it mm -hmm. wasn't definitive enough for me to say, yeah, that's exactly what that is. But I did tell the guy, I said, man, I didn't notice that. Good wow. idea, you know. Yeah. Even if it was paranoia, it was still something interesting. Hmm. Um, and then, of course, I did tell you that I started having experiences with Anubis. Uh, of course, that's another conversation. But mm. um, anyway, so that, that could be related to that, um, mm. if, if there was any type of dog man around. I didn't tell you in our pre-interview, but I have seen a coyote person before. Really? Um, and contrary to what people say that, you know, some people say that they're always around Bigfoot. That's not true. I've only seen one coyote person, and it, it was in an area where there are Sasquatch, but it was not where I was talking to them when I was driving down the road. I saw it on the side of the road. Is that the same as a dog man? Or? Yeah, the coyote, it's basically an upright walking coyote. I'd never seen anything like that in my life, and it was not physical. Wow. It was in the spirit world. It's hard to explain what I hmm. saw, and but I'll never forget it. You know, and it, it definitely caught my attention. Um, I couldn't tell whether it was evil or, uh, you know, and I think we have to come to a point where these things don't really fall under a black and white view of evil or good, that they may just be wild creatures. Interesting. You know, mm. that, that their nature is mm. wild. So what we, per what they are as wild, we might perceive as evil sometimes. Interesting. You know, sometimes go for the Sasquatch too, you know, like even when they are, you know, when you're talking to a Sasquatch, they're knocking and they're making loud sounds. You have to get used to that and realize it's not aggression. You know, mm. so it takes some time. It's just their wildness expressing, you know. Wow. And uh, shoot, if anything, man, I'd long to have that again mm. uh, if, if we ever had it. But, uh, but yeah, I have seen one coyote person before. I did want to share that, that they are out there. Wow. I haven't seen a bunch of dog men. I've never been attacked by one. I haven't had a major encounter. I've never had an opportunity to speak with one. I'd like to, but I don't want to go out. Ch I've heard that I should go out and chase now. But anyways, that's mm. another subject. But anyways, uh, so that, yeah, that basically more than sums up my first experience. So I don't know if you want to move on to the next question or if I, you just yeah. have any questions to ask. Well, there, there, one thing stood out to me that I was curious is, do you have any sort of recollection on what, was there any thought behind remaining there when you heard those sounds instead of, yeah, a lot of people would probably want to just go oh, home. Oh man, I'm a, I'm a. I'm an adventurer, dude. I've, I've, <laughs> I mean, I've I've stared demons in the eye. I've, I've and I'm not lying. That's not an exaggeration or just a sarcasm. I've I've seen mm. scary things, very frightening things, and uh, I'm not afraid like that. I can be scared. I think fear is uh, for some people like me, and there's other people like me that are you know paranormal investigators or whatever. They get to a point where you know they've seen so much of it, it doesn't scare them anymore, and they might be startled by something 
Just like okay. if a sabe made a certain a sudden noise, you know, forever they'll startle me, but they don't scare me like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You know. Okay. And, um, not that they mean to. It's getting kind of dark in here, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, it's all good. So, anyways, that's kind of how I look at that. You know, is that no? I was I I was there for to find out, and yeah, I get scared. My adrenaline gets pumping, but you sat through I mean, it. Well, mm. I mean, I grew up getting jumped all the time when I was a kid, so you know, mm. you you know, it's coming. You might okay. as well just get ready to fight, you know. But in that case, it was not so much fight, but it was it's ready to fight or fly or just stand peacefully in my ground. And just see what happens. Yeah, exactly. You know. Wow stay open and i don't recommend that to everyone in every situation i'm just one of those people and i don't didn't have a girlfriend don't have a girlfriend not married don't have kids so it's not like i'm gonna die so let's you know i mean if i die it's you know who's gonna miss me so hmm. <laughs> let's let's stay and find out but it, sometimes right. those things are, are you know those moments are what changes our life i feel like a lot of people would have maybe lived with the question what would have happened if i stayed there yeah, no, see, if that, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm staying, I'm staying. Hmm. We're going to find out. And if, and if you scare me bad enough to drive off for five minutes, I'm coming back. <laughs> you know, I'm serious. <laughs> I mean, that's straight up. I haven't had a problem. That I don't consider that a problem now. I think that Sabe person was trying to, uh, he had tried to get my attention before lightly several times. And it wasn't working. And I think he was A, trying to get my attention, and B, trying to set uh, whose boundary it is. Okay. You know, trying to say, okay, this is my territory. I need you to know that when you're here, this is my territory. But I want to be friendly with you. Please be with me. Wow. If that's that definitely, a, I'd say that's a unique perspective. A lot of people would just have sheer terror. Well, that's what his behavior says to me, just according to looking at gorillas. Okay. You know, gorillas will act crazy until you figure out, don't look them in the eye and okay. let them be in control of their territory. And then all of a mm. sudden you can be around them. Now wow. with Sasquatches, you don't have to sit down and start eating grass or anything like that, you know, and turn your head completely away, but it, it helps to just have a humble attitude. Okay. You know, that, and that helps anywhere. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm not just talking to you, I'm talking to people in general. Yeah. But, uh, and that helps anywhere. I mean, I'm preaching the choir with you, brother, but it helps anywhere in the forest. It really mm. does. It, it, it have a humble attitude in the spirit yeah. world. You know, any any dealing with any of this paranormal stuff, have a humble attitude. Don't assume that what you believe is what is true. You know? I like it. Um, just allow things to be what they are, and, and let things show themselves to you. Let things reveal themselves you know, in their mm. own way and in their own time. And and it comes much more in a peaceful manner. It's mm. the, if everybody wants instant gratification, what happens to the person who usually, uh, the person who's overweight that loses too much weight too fast? They Going back, back, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happens to the person that loses it slowly? I know, I'm that person. I used to weigh 270 pounds. I'm down to about 175. Wow. And that's that's a long time. Though. But uh, so it, I, keep, I kept it off. And most mm. of those people learn they lead a healthier lifestyle. Even if they gain a little back, they still lead a healthier lifestyle overall, you know, in general. And it's the same thing with approaching what happens when you move into a relationship too fast. You know, and I think this happens with bromances as much as it does with, you know, men meeting women and women meeting men. Or, or sorry, I guess it could go either way, women with women, men with men. <laughs> but uh, as far as, like, uh, romantic, what I'm trying to say is uh, it happens as much in romance as it does. It happens as much in bromances as it does in romances where mm. you know people rush things too fast and sometimes yeah. even guys rush friendships too fast and then they end up hating each other after you know a short period of time or something mm. you know and it's it's kind of funny when you think about that um yeah i think the sabe people are good at controlling the pace of the relationship between them and the humans they choose to get to wow them, if that makes any sense mm. and i think that allows for the human to learn how to properly act, you know, around the sabi people, it gives the human time. Mm. A lot of quiet time there. Where you just like me right now, you just got to fill in the space and talk, you know. Mm. And uh, and and they, you know, that quiet, their quiet says volumes. It speaks volumes. Mm. You know? They're there. They're knocking. They're responding. They're listening. They may be mm. talking to you in your mind. 
You may not mm. be hearing them, you know. Again, I say you, I'm talking to the general audience. Um, yeah. They may be speaking to you in your heart. You're not feeling them. Um, mm. So it's, it's, but even being out there and talking to them, the more you talk to them, the more you're going to feel them, the more you're going to get in touch with them, the more they're going to respond, whether it's emotionally, you know, or different ways, they're going to have reactions within themselves. Okay. And if you're in tune with them, tune with that, then, you know, you're going to cause reactions within them. Mm. So if you're singing to them, you know, whether you're sharing a story with them or whatever, even if they don't share that reaction with you. Mm. So that's always there, you know. Um, but then the more you uh, quiet your energy, and you can even, like, even though I'm talking a lot, I can still quiet my energy as I'm talking a lot and pull back a little bit, more, mm. you know, and, and listen a little bit more. Mm. Two things at once. And so being around them has caused me to be able to do that. And I get to where I'm deaf in my right ear, but out of my left ear, I can hear sounds coming from everywhere, all kinds of different sounds, and I can pick out all different kinds of sounds. And I can know what's happening in the forest by my ears. If mm. I didn't need my eyes to see where I was walking or driving, I wouldn't need my eyes at all. You know mm. what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. With the Sabe people. I mean, I just wouldn't. Yeah. I'm glad I got to see them the seven times I did. It's not necessary, you know. Mm. But I'm, I love it. I want to see him again. I'm not uh, yeah. fighting, you know. I, I'm not throwing that out there. But uh, I'm. But it's not for me when I tell him when I go talk to him. So I'm not here to try to see you. I say you're beautiful, you know. But I'm not trying to see you. I know you still want to be seen. Mm. But uh, I say I just I just come to talk to you. But one of the things that bothers me is I wonder if they have developed a collective desire to stay hidden because of the judgments of man. Hmm. And, and we're judging judgments of humans about the way they look that that we react and we see them we go ah! you know and freak out yeah. um that hurts my heart to think that mm. can you imagine a whole race of people hiding because they're because we fear them because of the way they look right i mean how how often do we people actually sit and think about these things you know yeah it, it hurts my heart and only because they're good beings. If they weren't good beings, I wouldn't care. They are. They're beautiful. They're good. They're loving. They're peaceful. They are the. They are more beautiful than. They're more beautiful than we'll ever be on the inside. I'm sorry. They are. Yeah, I, I've had some. I see where you're coming from. You know, <clears throat> we saw their beauty on the outside. We would accuse them of being some kind of nephilim or something again, anyway. Yeah. Because we wouldn't want to know what to do with it, you know. I think uh, Mike Patterson says they're the epitome of junk, don't judge a book by its cover. Yes, and Mike Patterson, percent <clears throat> right, you know, two hundred percent. But uh, yes, it's 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 that simple. And they, yeah, mm. they are the epitome of that. And, and I don't know any other way to put it than the way he said it. You know, love that. But uh, they're they're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people, and you really have to get to know them. Wow. Um, and, and, and when you get to know them, it, it touches your heart. It makes you grow as a person. It can heal you. It can heal certain areas of your life. It's not a fix-all. Wow. It's not there to fix you, and, and we shouldn't expect anything from them. Mm. Um, but uh, if you are a friend to them, they will be a friend to you. However, do not I tell humans, do not try to drag them into human dramas. Um, if you're a narcissistic person, uh, not you, I don't think you are, but uh, if someone's a narcissistic person or definitely sociopathic, they're going to pick up on that and eventually that's going to come out and reveal itself a lot more quickly than it does with other humans and, and they're not going to want to be around that type of person. Hmm. I wouldn't take a narcissistic person around me. Hmm. If you know, I know that word gets tossed, tossed around a lot, but it's basically a person that doesn't think about anybody but themselves at all. Sociopath is someone that could be like a continu uh, what do you call it, a habitual liar. Excuse me, and, and does hurts other people for their own gain is okay with that. You know? mm. And any of those kinds of people, you really just want to leave at home uh, <laughs> for the most part. And yeah, because it's just not worth it. But uh, and and they won't talk to them as much. I've I've done it before. I've taken some people out. But I take I took one friend out that I I feel is narcissistic. I'm not saying his name or bash him at all. And and he they seem to connect with him. Um, but he's a Buddhist and. Uh, so maybe um that didn't have anything to do with the narcissism at all i'm not trying to say that but uh, i actually appreciate buddhism very much but he's a buddhist and so maybe that gives him enough peace of mind or heart for them to feel comfortable enough to make sounds around him and mess with him he doesn't react to him 
Mm. Uh, I don't know. Maybe a past life thing. I don't know. You know, so it's between, and that's another thing too, is like what goes on between a, a Sasquatch family and, and their human is between them and their human too. So, you know, uh, however they react to another human, I can't just say, well, I don't like this guy. So I'm sure they won't like him. Mm. Don't do that BS, man. You know, let them be who they are. Let us be who we are. If we don't like somebody then we don't have to like them. You know, but if they want to like something, if they choose to like a human, then maybe we should pay attention to that fact. Yeah. But either way, I heard of a psychologist, seemed like a great man. He said that he took him food offerings for five years. This was on one of these TV shows I was watching about Sasquatch. And uh, he was a psychologist. So after he had his first encounter, he said, I, t I went back. And he said, I took for five years, I took him food, and they would not take the food offering from me. Wow. Years. And it's finally after five years they do it. And I'm like, wow. And I'm talking to 140 different families in two and a half years. So what, what is it about him? That, and I don't think he was a bad guy at all. He did not come across that way at all. He's someone I would go out with, you know, mm. go out into the field with. That's what I mean. So what did he do wrong? And then mm. he started saying, well, I would take a camera with me. And as soon as he said camera, I was like, okay. Right Interesting. But again, I'm not bashing because like mike does some things with cameras with the sabe people and that's between him and the sabe people so yeah i got i'm following me, you you know and for me and for other beginners i typically tell you go out with audio and even then if you are going to use video maybe wait and become their friends first and get their permission hmm. look at them like a lot of the early indigenous people that did not want their cam their pictures taken for the camera. Hmm. they didn't trust it for whatever reason they felt like it would take a part of their soul or whatnot. i've heard that so, and I do believe that they might carry indigenous American DNA through whatever tribes or nation, I'm not sure. But um, I think that's very highly likely for some reason. I don't know why, I just feel that. I feel a connection there. Do you have any sort of indigenous in your blood or anything? Not that I know of myself. I, I don't, but I haven't done any extensive research into it at all. Brother Littlefoot is not meant to make me sound indigenous at all. That's no, I, I, I yeah. thought of it like... Uh, little brother to the sasquatch yeah yeah it, it was based on the uh, picture <clears throat> on the back of my book where it has my foot next to uh my shoe next to one of their large prints you know it looks like shaquille o'neal's foot <laughs> but i actually use their prints i use a uh, large human's prints like shaquille o'neal's about a 22 or 23 so you take that size and whatever print you find you measure it against it and then you can guesstimate about what size they are about what height they are from that print Wow. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So Shaquille O'Neal is about seven foot three. Mm -hmm. For people who don't, don't know, Shaquille O'Neal was a famous basketball player um, for several years, and now he's uh, all over TV and doing all kinds of stuff. I think he's upset somebody recently, but I don't know what's going on there. But uh, anyway, uh, he has about a size 20, seven foot three tall, uh, has about a size 22, uh, 23 shoe hmm. he wears. And I compared this size uh, footprint to that shoe, and it was close. So I, I could take assumption that one of the large Sabe people around my home uh, where that print was taken is, is about close to seven and a half feet tall, seven, three, seven, okay. six. Okay. They may not measure up exactly like we do, but still, I think yeah. that's a safe safe place to start. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Carl Safina, who's a, he's a wildlife ecologist, I think, uh, he said, uh, and he actually has a foundation and so on, uh, he talked about talking with talking with animals, humans learning how to talk to animals. And people were always, you know, that's something people, a lot of scientists frowned on. And um, Carl Safina said, and, and they would say, you know, oh, no, you just end up projecting. Carl Safina takes that and he says, you got to start somewhere. And now I'm looking at I'm looking at it that way, that it is it. You have to start somewhere. Okay. So even if you think you are just projecting when it comes to the mind speak, whether you're working with Sasquatch, whether you're working with other animals or not, just go with it a little. Don't go with it to the point of danger. Just go with it. Just go with it and see where it goes. Hmm. See what it leads to. See if their reactions uh, coincide with any, any you know, uh, words you're speaking in your mind to them or words they might be speaking to you. I do telepathic conversation with the Sabe father near my home every night when I go out um to have a tobacco on the porch and uh i'll uh i'm sorry it's a cigarette but i'll tell them tobacco i say i'm having them we'll have a tobacco so they know, that's i use different words with them but uh anyway i'll 
I'll sing to them. I'll play them a little harmonica. And that's the same way with all the Sabe people. I go out and visit them. I'm always singing a song before I leave, too. But uh, mm. I'll go out, and then after that, with the one here, I will immediately go into telepathic conversation because he's across the creek. And I don't want to be too loud. I've got a few neighbors around, you know. And uh, he will whoop after I complete thoughts. Wow. And then I will, like, literally say, okay, I'm going to go back behind the home and talk to your, your son, Bobo. And uh, he'll... Uh, and that's happened so many times to, to the point where I, I just can't, you know. And there are times where he's just repeatedly whooping. But in that point, in that times where I'm talking to him a lot of times, he'll get quiet and then he'll whoop right just when I complete thoughts. Mm. You know, so um, that right there has always fascinated me. And that's been a, that's something that's been consistent. That's happened every night. Wow. Um, depending on how, how communicative he is. Some nights they're quieter. If it's been raining a lot. Mm. They're cold and windy in the day. They might be a little bit quieter at night. They are, I want to say they are like uh, humans in the way that when the kids are up, they're up. <laughs> you know, um, so if, if you hear the children, you know the father's awake. Or, you know, they're great fathers. Great. That's the other thing. They're doing better with families than humans are nowadays. Big time. Wow. But we we are not evolving. We are evolving in technology. We can't live outside. Mm. We didn't evolve. Evolution is is our body. It's not what we can do. It's what a, evolution of the mind, evolution of technology. That's what we're seeing today. That's what we're seeing. But we're not seeing evolution of human. Hmm. Maybe we are living longer. And then you know, medicine. There are some breakthroughs, but then medicine also has many drawbacks. And of course, medicine is a big pharmaceutical industry is a big mess. Yeah. But um. Hmm. But either way, uh, we're not really evolving. They can live outside. They don't need fire. They don't. Uh, they don't need a home. They don't need shelter. They don't need a car. They have evolved past us. Mm -hmm. We're humans are. We're way back here. Yeah. Oh, and we don't even realize that anymore. <laughs> we're so proud of ourselves in that short distance we've come. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sure you want to get to the other questions, man. No, I'm listening. But. Uh, but anyway, yeah, and, and we need to start looking at life a little differently, that maybe we're not the most intelligent species on the earth, and maybe that, maybe not only that, maybe we're like number 20 on the list of the most intelligent species on earth. Hmm. Um, they're already, you know, they're saying whales have greater cerebral cortexes than we do in a more complex language system, wow. I believe, so, or a very complex language system. I'm not sure it's more complex than humans, but either way, and then... Uh, Oh, I, I learned. I saw where gorillas are learning how to take down poachers' traps. That was awesome. I was like, wow. "Yes, one for the gorillas, <laughs> finally." But yeah, they're taking down poachers' traps. They filmed them, and they were teaching their children to do it. And the children were taking and teaching the youngest ones how to do it. Wow. Yeah, that's like wow. I mean, that to me, my heart's going like, Whoa. Mm. "This is amazing." You know, if there is a god, if there's a creator, this is awesome. Thanks. Mm. This is beautiful. Thanks that I'm alive in this time to be able to witness <laughs> this stuff. Um, so they're evolving. They're adapting. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what adaptation and evolution is. And now when I say evolution, I say it loosely. I don't mean and I'm not speaking in terms of like even Charles Darwin said that evolution is a theory. <laughs> theory. Mm. It's not a Bible. He did not write it down as a Bible and tell people if they didn't believe it, it was they were going to hell. He just said this is a theory, a possibility. So taking from some of those possibilities, hmm. they've evolved, they've adapted to live outside. And we know that, you know, certain animals, if they live in water long enough, their feet get wet. Uh, I think that's true for people, uh, people who don't wear shoes. Uh, their feet become more splayed and adapted to walk on the ground that they live on. So if it's a hard, you know, I've seen uh, tribes of indigenous people in other parts of the world. Who, their feet, their toes are very splayed out like the, some of the Sasquatches are because they never wore shoes like the Sasquatches. Mm. And so their feet evolved that way. And our feet evolved or growing inward and they're made to walk on flat ground, you know, and in human areas and not necessarily, you know, flat earth and not on bumpy uh, roots and rocks and trees and everything else that, that I assume the Sasquatch people, they've evolved for all that. Mm. So these are, if you want to call that evolution, I don't have, to, I'm not trying to argue evolution. Whatever you want to call it, it's happening. And we are behind. Hmm. Because we do not live close to the earth anymore like we used to. Hmm. 
We have used technology to remove ourselves from the earth, and therefore, look what's evolving into AI now. Yeah. Our technology. Our technology. Mm-hmm. You know, so we need to. I think the Sabe people are calling us back to the wall. Hmm. They're, it's it's they're long calling us back to the to their world um, because it's a world that they used to share with us, hmm. and and we've lost that. You know, and maybe they miss us. Maybe they miss us as brothers and sisters. Hmm. And maybe deep down we miss them too. I know I realized I missed them when I, when I knew they were here again. I literally. Literally, I mean, straight up in my heart, felt like I told them all, and I still tell them stay. I feel like I'm meeting family I never knew I had. Mm. I feel like I'm just now meeting family I never knew I had, and it, and it almost hurts. I almost want to be mad at somebody, you know, for not telling me about my family. Right. There's nobody to be mad at, other than the government. <laughs> we can be mad yeah. at the plenty, but you know, mom and dad I can't blame them, you know, and obviously and. Yeah, but it feels that way in my heart. Like I'm, I'm almost angry. I mm. wanted to know you when I was 12. I wow. wanted to know you when I was 11. When I was 10, I wanted to run out in the forest and the trees and the rocks and the water. I wanted to climb the streams with you. I wanted to go fishing with you. I wanted to be your friend. Mm. That was never a time in my life, even if I didn't know you existed, that I didn't want to be your friend. You know, to the to the Sabe, to be a friend to the Sabe people. Mm. I always wanted that, that that imaginary friend that was real. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The one that is actually real, you know, and that grows up with you and throughout your life is there, is there, is there, is there. And when I say imaginary friend that's real, I mean something that other humans call imaginary. Mm-hmm. But, but the individual would know as this is real. Or and yeah. eventually some of the other humans would get around them would get to know. Mm-hmm. And then even other humans would have their own quote unquote imaginary friends and then we get together and talk about it, you know. According to other humans with their imaginary. Whatever. I'm just being silly, I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> um, but that's the reality of it, you know, is that we're talking about I'm telling you about an extremely deep personal relationship that I have with roughly five hundred imaginary friends. Wow. Imaginary friends. Hmm. That's how it is to this world. Mm-hmm. It, it, I, I can't even begin to describe to you, which I'm sure you, I, because you've told me you've had some encounters, you have an understanding of this. I can't begin to explain to the world how, uh, I don't even know what the word is, um, between a rock and a hard place that feels mm. um, when people uh, demean you like that. <laughs> And, and demean this very, very special experience that if they would, the humans, the other humans would open up, they would have too. Yeah. Um, and you know that. You know, like, oh, I just want, you know, and all you want to do is share the joy of mm-hmm. you know, knowing the Sabe people with these other humans. And yeah. they, they can't, you can, and they can't see the forest for the trees. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's bizarre. I took a family member out to have an experience, and at the first two places I took him, they would not talk to him. And my family member is kind of, uh, he's a non-believer, hmm. uh, somewhat. And uh, I took him out to the first family the next night, the very first family I ever had an encounter with. And then I, I met my friends out there. And this time, they, uh, they were making noises around us for a while, but my family member kept saying well i think it's just animals in the forest but i do keep hearing sounds mm-hmm. he was trying to be as honest mm-hmm. about it as he could and i told him i said you need to open up and mm-hmm. say to him hey i want to mm-hmm. know you i want to talk to you You know, try to talk to him like a friend and he did it. Mm-hmm. and he and then they knocked a couple of times above him they were on the ridge above him we were standing out in the back in the parking area and we told him we heard the knocks we said they're knocking at you buddy and then uh and we walked a little piece off. By the way, he's also 56 years old. So, you know, this is a lot for a man that's that old to go out. You know, not old, but it's, you know, for that age to go out there and put himself out there like that. And he walked along the ridge. And all of a sudden, he looks behind us and he said, that tree over there behind y'all, and this is a four foot thick, uh, I think it's a hickory or an oak tree, uh, it's just shaking. It's just trembling by itself. And no other tree mm. was trembling. There was no, it was a very, I mean, the slightest breeze blowing. more just like, air moving but not really a breeze and all the leaves on that tree were rattling wow i mean they were trembling and my brother and and 
you know, he's an intelligent guy, but he ended up, he looked at the tree and said, that tree is shaking and no other trees are shaking. Mm. And I know it. And he walked over towards it and we all were, I was already sitting there. I noticed it. I was just so used to unusual things happening there. He's like, there has to be a large animal up in that tree, but we could see in through the tree, we, you know, the leaves were dead. They were just kind of hanging on there. And we could see through the tree against the skyline. There was nothing in there in the tree at mm. all. The skyline was lit kind of bright. And I made a joke and I said, I said to the, one of the Sabe people that we call hippie. I said, hippie, is that you up there in that tree, shaking that tree and, and <laughs> you're, you're in predator form. And he already knows what predator form means. You know, wow. that he's invisible. I always cover myself up. You're invisible. Um, I had to tell, I had to explain to him what predator was and everything, but, uh, they don't get pop culture, you know. They, they know <laughs> words about the earth, the rocks, the trees, the water. And then if you explain things to them like money, then then they have an understanding. But okay. they don't know McDonald's or Walmart is, or they don't know <laughs> who the predator is, of course. You know, they don't know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is. But anyway, um, unless he's met him, and I don't know. But uh, anyway, uh, I said, "Are you in predator form?" And and you know, I just kind of laughed, and my and my uh, my family member, who I've already probably slipped up and said he was. <laughs> He, uh, he actually said to me later that night, he said, when you said that, he said, I actually felt like you were speaking the truth. He was like, I felt like that's what it was, even though wow. you were just joking and just being silly. And, uh, but right after the tree, he walked up to the tree, it stopped shaking. And the three of them, my friend who's a female and her uh, ex-husband, who she's still you know close to, and my, and my family member all standing there at the base of the tree, all of a sudden, off to our left, we hear the loudest, most clear knock. Mm. And I go, family member? I said his name, you know, buddy, that was a knock. And he goes, that was a knock, little foot. And uh, <laughs> he said, but and he goes, shh, shh, quit, quit. I'm trying to hear that. I hear something else. And then we started arguing. And I actually have it on recording. It's quite funny. <laughs> um, I need to put it up. Um, I need to put it up on there because it's, you know, well, it's my brother, you know. So, it, you know, to have it up on there, it would be hilarious. Yeah. It's his first encounter with him. It's amazing yeah. to capture that, too. It is. And, and he knows I got it. And um, But even since then, he said, I just don't see how an eight-foot-tall hominid could live in the forest and stay in the same place all the time. Because that is true. They're always in the same places when I go to talk to them. <clears throat> so I don't know, you know, how they do that, how they hunt. Mm. And, uh, maybe there is some teleportation oh. going on there or whatever. Mm. Um, and I and I honor that. He's like all other animals. Big animals have to travel to find food. I'm like, I know you're right, brother. I can't argue with that. You know, uh, I don't know how they do that, but they do, and it's real. I've seen them. Mm. So he still struggles with that too. You know, and so there are humans that will have an experience, and they'll still struggle with the understanding of what they experienced. You know, yeah. Especially if it's only one time. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for me, I get to experience it all the time, so it's I don't have to question it anymore. You know, it's amazing <laughs> yeah i'm lucky you know i'm grateful and and for other people that get to too and now that you're marked uh, according to our conversation before the interview you'll you'll get that opportunity too over time so mm. it's probably already starting to you know definitely makes me wonder but anyways i'm going to be tapping on my vape but i am listening to you if you want to ask any questions or anything because i know I'm, I'm running my mouth for a while yeah i can go to the next one um sure. let's see this is CBD, by the way. Just in case. <laughs> All right. I think I sort of asked you part of this, but I'll ask it again. Can you describe what it was, what it was that made you decide to stay, which you did answer, and actually start the part that I didn't ask you yet <clears throat> is what made you decide to start singing? Um, having I, I actually did watch shows about Sasquatch. Uh, it had been all my life, and just it was just kind of you know, entertaining. I've always been interested in the paranormal. And I'd heard somewhere that the native, uh, the indigenous people used to sing to them when they were mm. going through their areas of the forest and that would help keep peace between them. They'd let them know that we don't mean any harm. Wow. And they would actually go through and gather berries and things like that in their parts of the forest and they wouldn't have any problems with it. And uh, the other thing is just a, a tug in my heart that just said, no, you know, I've always been guided by higher power. I don't, I've defined it different ways. I've kind of gotten to a point in my life where I'm agnostic, but I still follow that higher power, that love. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't like to put labels on it. So I just, I let it lead me and, and it led me um, to stay. 
<laughs> wow. And it okay. led me the right way. I wasn't going to be hurt. I wasn't going to be harmed. I wasn't going to do anything worse than I was already doing to, to attract, you know, to warrant more harm. Sorry. So, you know, my feeling was to leave. I need to flee. My mind saying, go fear, fear, go. Love was saying, no, no, wow. no, stay, stay. That reminds me a little of uh, Mike Patterson. <coughs> Excuse me. In my video mentioned that video that I played where some people might say that it sounded scary and he, he interpreted it differently. I saw where people were saying they keep it to go to sleep to at night when they listen to Nefetia. Yeah. Nefetia, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but Nef. Yeah. Mike calls Nef. Yeah, that they they listen to his voice to go to sleep at night. Um, so it's funny, the reactions. I think everybody, I, humans, humans project. You know yeah. this. Humans, I'm speaking to humans out there. We are projectors. We are we are movie projectors. <laughs> we project movies onto the world outside of us, and we create what we see. We don't necessarily create our world. We co-create it with yeah. others, but we uh, we project a lot of what we believe uh, on to everything out there beyond us, and that's why there's a lot of uh, people. If they get too far into uh, demon demonology, um, not everyone who gets into it, but the person with the wrong mindset, you know, the Christian with the wrong mindset, and he comes from a place of fear, he starts seeing demons everywhere, mm. you know. Um, and even if they don't have to get into demonology, they may just get so far into it, and they see demons everywhere. They see evil everywhere. Mm. <clears throat> and what do we have now? We have a bunch of preachers on TV that are making millions of dollars and they're telling us where all the evil is. <laughs> people listen to them and people who have far less money than them send money to them. If that's not witchcraft and they're not cast under a spell, I don't know what is. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, we live in a ridiculous world. We live in a we live in an idiocracy. It's here. If, if people haven't seen the movie, please go watch the movie Idiocracy. Mm -hmm. It explains a lot. It just does. It flat out explains a lot. It's by Mike Judge, who did Beavis and Butthead. It's just a funny little oh. entertaining movie. Um, but it explains a lot of reality, the current reality we're living in. And uh, we, we live in a world of bigger, better, faster, more. But our hearts and our spirits and, and the earth itself calls for, calls for a place of uh, no, slower, <laughs> no, <laughs> less, <laughs> um, you know, uh, smaller, uh, quieter, mm. you know, <clears throat> these words. And mm. so the human idea is always to industrialize, to industrialize. We can program like a computer. Uh, we need to pull back. We're going to mm -hmm. have to pull back.